We're excited to be here. Obviously, uh, you know, 18 months ago, taking over here, this was the goal, and, and to get our guys to experience being in the field of 64 in the regional, we're, we're just we're just really excited to play. And obviously, we know it's going to be a daunting task, but we're fired up to be here. Coach Silva, what are your expectations coming into this tournament? Just the same thing they've always been. Um, just want our guys to go out and play hard and, and, and have fun and, and play for each other. And you know, we know we know the opponents we're up against are extremely challenging. Um, but the reality is, it's a baseball game, right? And so if we go throw strikes, play catch, and get some timely hits, then you know we feel like we'll have an opportunity to be in each game that we play. Uh, for the players, I guess, uh, can y'all talk about the experience so far? Here. You go first, then you go. I mean, it's an SEC ballpark. Uh, brings the same atmosphere that we had earlier in the season when we played at LSU. I mean, it's the same dimensions. Probably going to be a little heckling out there in right field, I'm sure. But, I mean, the atmosphere, I'm positive it's going to be something that we're going to remember. Just like he was saying, it's SEC. Like, just walking on that field, felt, it felt different. It felt like tomorrow's going to be awesome. Just walking through the town, it's just it's way different than Thibodeau. Yeah. Way different. Uh, one of our media members wanted just coaches scouting Alabama. What do you what do you see in them? Yeah, I mean, I've said it to everybody's ask. I think they're an Omaha caliber team. Um, just you know, really potent at the front end, the back end of the rotation, and then obviously older established position players that can really hurt you up and down the lineup. I don't think there's going to be you know an easy out in the lineup. I don't think that. Uh, there's going to be a pitch you can take off, then offensively we can't give away any at-bats. I mean, we're going to have a work cut out for us. We know how challenging that is, but we're proud to be here, and I'm excited to see our guys compete. Coach, having gone through this at Louisiana Tech, kind of knowing how it works, biggest thing that you've learned in, in your couple of runs, and obviously you've gotten to the point where you've been to a regional final, what, what's the, the key things to impart upon these guys? I just want to make it smaller. I think this time of year everybody makes it bigger than it is. It's still a baseball game, right? Everybody knows what's at stake and what you're trying to accomplish. And we've been kind of on this run for a few weeks now, though, right? The conference regular season championship for us and then the tournament championship for us the very next week. And so I think the reason we've been able to do that is we just kind of take it. We, we do. We take it one pitch at a time, one game at a time. There'll be no – Rah rah speech before the game. It'll be really subtle and just consistent. I want them to go out and have fun and play. And if we execute, we feel like we're going to have an opportunity. For, for both of you guys, Parker and Zane, both being local to Thibodeau, obviously Zane from Homa, Parker from right there, BD White product. But what does this mean to you guys to be representing your community on, on this big of a stage? Uh, Parker, it feels awesome. I mean, as a kid, you always believe just on the road to Omaha, that's all you see. And just to have this chance is awesome. And I mean, like I said earlier upstairs, that I think my family's more pumped up than me for this. <laughs> Man, I'm sure Parker can relate to this, but uh, after winning that championship regular season and the tournament, uh, hugging my dad after that game, I mean, something you don't trade, something I'll never forget. I mean, you got pictures that'll last a, life, a lifetime. Uh, that moment, I feel like our whole community feels it at the same time. It's not just personal with just our families in particular, but with that whole community, it is a family. So, I mean, I'm sure they feel that same moment with us. Coaches talked a lot, both of you guys, about you know taking a program and, and you know, instilling a culture and getting to the point where you're competing for championships, now you're winning championships. For both of you guys, what do you think was the key shift within the team, within the locker room, to get to the point where you guys are now a winning culture and, and are competing for championships? Like he always preaches, chemistry. The, how you get to chemistry is love. And I really, truly believe everybody <laughs> believes in one, in one another, and we all, we all love each other as one. I mean, I can't really explain it any better than that. He kind of took my answer, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this team is special. Uh, the way we bond in that locker room is like no other, coaches included. That's really all I can say about that. Coach, I can think of you know, 50 moments from this season that, that stick out for you. Do you see in your head, can you think back to a couple of turning points where you said, yeah, this team isn't just you know, telling them we've got a chance to win the title now. OK, yeah, i got a group that can go ahead and do this. Was there a moment or a couple moments in the season that kind of stuck out most? I mean, there were a few of them. I think the, it was a Saturday or Sunday game. We were playing on the road against Nebraska at Kansas State, and the weather was not great and ideal, and we weren't playing very well. And um, you know, every time you call them out, or every time we're facing adversity, they've always responded. And so they come out and get a win. Parker here for the cycle that day, which was huge for us. And we just had a different, you know, a different attitude about us. I think from that point moving forward, we still had some tough moments, but you know, 
the way we've responded all year facing adversity, you know, a bad game doesn't turn into a bad weekend, a bad weekend doesn't turn into a bad week, a bad week doesn't turn into a bad month, just consistently showing up and, and doing the work every single day. Uh, when when you see a bunch of guys that are at the field all the time, when the coaches aren't, they're there all the time. They spent, they're in the locker room all the time. They're there. You start thinking, you know, maybe this is the team. You know, maybe they're going to do something really special. And so to see it happen and to, for us to be sitting here, I mean, I know where the program was 18 months ago. These guys know where it was 18 months ago. And so I don't think anybody outside of that room realistically believed, uh, but we did. And that's really kind of the attitude we've taken from day one, that if we're together and everybody's focused on the task at hand, that we can accomplish something special. And so here we are. I guess for both the players, uh, everyone talks about, you know, you guys are all conference, but both you guys are both all defense. So just talk about, you know, how important uh, it was Kind of get on that level to see. Um, I mean, we've been since last year. We've been preaching, Coach uh, Coach Gabe Woods. He's been preaching that he wants to be the best defense in the conference, and it's just we. I mean, we we catch ground balls almost every day. Just continuing to put in the consistency of work, and we mess up. He gets on us a little bit, not much, but it just he just it was. Just, we always did like the small things. It was always the drills. I mean, what was the PVC pipe drill. Yeah, just for the working on bad hops and stuff like that. Just the adversity you're going to face during a game, just preparing that way is really helpful. Yeah, I mean, our defense, that's the one thing this year that's been consistent, consistently good, I feel like, the whole year. Um, when hitting wasn't going right or when pitching wasn't going right, you can always count on our defense to go out and make a play and change the energy of a game. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess one for Coach, and, and you two guys also. Um, Coach Jacob Myers, the, the season he's had as a true freshman is obviously been sensational. I know it's, a lot of people nationally have taken notice. What, what has stuck out to you most about why he's been able to acclimate so quickly? And for both of you guys, how impressive has it been to see a freshman being able to do that on this, you know, this stage so far? Yeah, well, we tell all the guys that we recruit, we're not bringing them in here to sit on the bench, and so there's an expectation. But has he, you know, he's exceeded our expectations, sure. I don't think anybody thought he was going to be this good this early, but the moment's never really too big for him. He loves to compete, and he's the same kid every day. And so it's crazy. When we announced our rotation um, to start the season, I think everybody else in that locker room knew he was going to start for us one of the days, except for him. That's how humble he is, and that's so it's so unique, you know. And so I think early on he was just going out having fun and just kind of happy to be pitching in Division One baseball, and then – I'd say his third or fourth start, I think he started thinking, okay, I think I'm the guy, you know, and he's answered the bell all year for us. So it's, it's been huge to see, and obviously we wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for him. I can say that he has the mindset that I wish I had when I first got here. Uh, it took me, what, three years, four years to build that <laughs> confidence in myself? Well, Jacob has it already as a freshman, and we know it. Everybody in our locker room knows it, that he's going to be special because he has a mindset that's – He's going to keep working. He's going to keep getting better, and there's no doubt about that. I think the thing that sticks out to me the most about him is uh, he's for a freshman. He's very emotionally mature. He can't. He has a big. They give up a big inning, or he gives up a big inning, and it's the same thing every time. Same face, same expressions. Gets in the dugout, goes back to work like nothing never happened. And like X, I wish I'd have learned that. Still trying to learn it. Yeah, we're still trying. Yeah. <laughs>